doing? <coughs> Do we have audio? It's recording. LA, um, it's, it's, it's good to have you here, bro. I'm excited. Um, let's just get right into it. So tell me about your wife. How did y'all meet? <laughs> All right. My wife. How did we meet? Okay. Um, long story short. Okay. Well, we used to be, my wife and I used to be in the band, uh, or, or I call it uh, a little small choir at our old church. And um, when she first came to the U.S., um, you know, first time I saw her, I was like, ooh, she, she's beautiful. But, you know, I was too shy. You know, I was one of those dudes where I'm like, nah, I'm not going to say anything to her. She's probably not interested in to me and whatnot. But long story short, she... Um, her birthday came up that same year. She was like, hey, I heard it's your birthday coming up. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's on the 17th, you know. She's like, all right, all right, all right, cool. And long story short, man, she um, surprised me. You know, I don't really know this girl that much. I mean, I see her in the corner, you know, every time we're sitting on, you know, in church or whatnot, and she would uh, say hello from time to time. But out of nowhere, you know, she stopped by my house and gave me a birthday card. And that right there just... <laughs> shocked me I'm like okay why what's going on here you know uh, but long story short she uh, reached out to my brothers and come to find out they're good friends uh, with the family and all as far as Haiti and all and then she uh, reached out to me and she's like hey uh, I think you cute I'm like really okay I think you cute too <laughs> okay uh, when did you decide to propose to her <laughs> when did I decide to propose to my wife? Um, my wife is unique, you know, she's not the typical uh, woman or the typical ladies out there, you know, she's very strong minded and strong will. And she did something that kind of opened my mind where I'm like, yo, she's, she's the one. Um, she was going to school in Orlando for her medical assistant. Uh, degree and out of nowhere she decided to surprise me I'm like hey what you doing here it's like yeah um guess what um I'm in town I'm like you in town I'm like okay what does that mean um it's like yeah um uh, I'm moving to Tampa I'm like oh okay okay why <laughs> I'm like well that's a dumb question but um it's just the smallest things that she does, you know, it's just that really gets to me. It's just the fact that, you know, she's the one that that will always check up on me and drop everything that she's doing just to make sure that I'm OK, you know, and that right there seal, seals the deal. You know, it's like um, what was it? Uh, Chevy has this thing or Ford where it says um, Ford built or or strong, whatnot. She's one of those, you know, they don't make them like that anymore. You know, and she's unique. And that's what I love about her. That's great. So when did you find out, or how did you find out um, your wife was diagnosed with cancer? Mm -hmm. I found out my wife had breast cancer. Um, it was last year um, in July. Um, the way it all started, it was just a regular annual exam. She, uh, it was around February that year. So I would say towards the peak or the beginning of the craziness as far as COVID. Um, and doctors like, hey, um, what's that lump? And she's like, eh. you know, the doctor was like, yeah, it's nothing. But, you know, you're, you're too young to have something like this. But, you know, just to play it safe, let's get it tested. Um, a few days later, you know, it was on a Wednesday, I remember her calling me, she's like, yeah, I just got off the phone with the doctors and they said, yes, it's stage two breast cancer. Um, talk about, you know, coming from everything being all right. Like, you know, she, we all have our careers, you know, um, two awesome boys and everything's great. We have a house, a little dog, you know, just a typical, the norm, I mean, not the norm, but successful life. And 
all of a sudden out of nowhere, the storm just comes in, bang, and just uh, surprise us all. And long story short, you know, we immediately, you know, um, you know, in this whole process of breast cancer, there's different stages. There's grief, there's moments where you're like, why us? What did we do wrong, you know? Um, there's moments where we're like, hey, we should have done this better. We should have, I guess we didn't do this. That's why this is happening. But at the end of the day, you know, um, there's a saying that I, um, I heard a while back that says, when the battle chooses you, what do you do? And we were at, we we're in a position where we're like, hey, all right, all hands on deck. So what we ended up doing is, you know, um, do research, sit down with the oncologists, surgeons, and try to figure out a game plan as to how can we fight this cancer. Um, little did I know there's different types of cancers. Uh, the type that she has is called HER2 um, cancer, and it's really driven by hormones, so it's a very aggressive one. And um, based upon her diagnosis, the doctors were saying, hey, we need to start chemo ASAP. We need to like try to neutralize this thing immediately because normally when people say breast cancer, you know, it's either it's a death sentence <laughs> or, you know, it's like, oh, simple surgery, boom, you take out the lumbar ball a day. No, this one was definitely different. Tell me more about the, uh, the chemo process. The chemo process was gruesome. A typical um, saying as far as, you know, breast cancer or any type of cancer, you know, they say, oh, chemotherapy, you know, just to help neutralize, you know, the cancer from spreading, okay? Once again, there's different types, but according to my wife's particular case, she, um, they had to start with chemotherapy first because the thing is her cancer is so um, unique where they didn't want to just remove the lump and say, okay, call it a day. The fact that it was so rare, they had to do chemo first to neutralize the, the rapid spread of the actual cancer. Then from there on, once they notice that the chemotherapy is actually working, then they will go ahead and have surgery and remove the lump and, and so forth. But for my wife, I would say it was tough. Um, and once again, my wife, you know, my, I would say my rose, my flower. It's like I have the water, I have all the fertilizer, I have the, the, the actual ingredients to help water this plant or this flower. And all of a sudden you see it's just dying. You can't do nothing about it. And as a man, it really tests you, you know. Um, she lost her hair. That was one of the things that was very hard for her. And, um, she, it got to a point where as far as the levels of pain, I just cannot explain to you. It's just, it's just rough. She lost her nails. It got to a point where it affected her nerve ends. So meaning if she has to open a bottle of water, she can't. It's like literally she has to open a certain way. If her hands just touches anything, she's in just a lot of pain. She tells me that the best way to describe it is like you're taking a little razor and you're just going in your fingers constantly because that's what the chemo does. It actually tries to neutralize it's all the cells that, um, that ends up healing a lot quicker. So just to help stop the spread of the cancer. But once again, like I mentioned, her case was different. But long story short, you know, as I mentioned earlier, when a battle chooses you, what do you do? How did that make her feel as a woman being in that position? As for my wife, it being in that position, she felt degraded because actually the best way that she describes it, she said her tatas betrayed her. <laughs> so, um, and it's the best way I can describe it and for all the men, men out there that for them to understand, for you guys to understand the level of this is just man imagine your manhood being taken away from you. You didn't do anything wrong. You know, you've been doing everything right. All of a sudden, bang, your manhood is gone. You know, 
exact same thing. You know, she she felt like her beauty. I mean, as you guys know, women when it comes to hair is that's their thing. Beauty, you know, um, it's it goes a long way. But with her, that was gone. You know, and as the husband, as a supporter, as her backbone. I had to be there and be like, hey, babe, despite it all, you look beautiful. You're awesome. It wasn't easy, but there's a little fine line where it says, for better or worse, I chose that for a reason. And that's why I'm still here. Were we des devastated? Yes. You know, especially her. You know, uh, one of the things that, that really hit us hard is just the fact that now, after doing this research, we have to now tell our kids that mommy has breast cancer. Um, one of the things that kind of threw me off, you know, I'm, I'm like, well, as a man, you know, you're like, yeah, I'm Superman. I can't, you know, this doesn't phase me. You know, I, you know, I can, I can deal with the, the, the load on my shoulders. You know, we have brow shoulders and we're men, we're menly men, but with this situation, <laughs> it really tests you. Um, when we sat down and tell our kids like, hey, you know, mommy has breast cancer and this is what it is and these are the steps that we have to take. Um, my youngest one, he said, um, is mommy gonna die? Um, as a man, you know, you're like, yo, I'm trying to be the strong one, you know? My wife is like calming down, crying, bawling out, the kids are bawling out, and I'm the one in the room like, man, you know, I, I, I was supposed to be strong, there you go, you know? But anyway, that really hit me, because the year before that, my mom passed away, and um, she lived with us for about a year and a half, and my kids got to see the whole spectrum of you know, what she went through. And my mom, to me, was considered, I call her the the Wonder Woman. Like, she's a, like, I've seen stuff that she's done, man. Like, it's, it's amazing stuff. Because, I mean, she's she came to the U.S. as an immigrant, you know, uh, as a woman, too. Granted, she's a woman. Came to the U.S. and she fought her way through all the paradigms, all the the things that were against women at the time, and she she worked her butt off. If I'm here today. If I'm successful today, it's because of her. You know, now the person that I can go and talk to when I'm like in a tight bind, she's no longer here. You know, now my wife has cancer. Bang! You're like, oh my gosh, what what's going on, man? You know, but. Um, when the battle chooses you, what do you do? And all we have to do is just fight. Right now, it's like, hey, battle mode. You know, it's like when you go to war, what do you do? You get all your ammo, get all your artillery, whatever, you know, boots, whatever, man. Just be ready to go. Yeah. Going through all this mentally, how did that impact you personally? The breast cancer process um, mentally, I would say, um, degraded me in a sense, you know, mentally, because, you know, you're trying to put on a straight face every day, but then yet it's like us men, we, we tend to like to fix things. You know, if I see a problem, I fix it, you know, um, that's what we do. But now you're, you're just helpless. You can't do nothing but just see the person that you love dearly suffer. The worst imaginable pain of them all. And mentally, it really did take a toll on me because now as a man, I had to put on different hats, okay? Um, my backbone, my partner in crime, I call her, um, she can't do the things that she used to do. I had to step it up, not only just a father, a husband. Sometimes a, I call her, I tell her this, I'm like, after going through this whole process, I can officially call myself a doctor, a doctor now because, <laughs> um, because there's a lot of times where I had to learn the terms. I had to learn how to change the dressings and, you know, 
and it gets to a point where not only that I have to be the nurse slash doctor, but also I have to be the mom. You know, I have to be the caregiver now. You know, at a young age, who would have thought? You know, um, but mentally, yes, it it was tough. Some days, I kid you not, it, it's the one of the things I would say that really pushed me to still like fight for it. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, when the battle chooses you, what do you do? Um, my wife, she is my inspiration. Indirectly, she doesn't know this, but she is. Because how do someone like, you know, she has a type of cancer, but uh, that, that's very deadly. But at the same time, she still goes to work, you know? Mentally, I was like, like, yo, if I'm going through all that pain, I don't want to, you know, I'll just stay in my little corner and just do my thing. And it's like, hey, woe is me. But with her, she still went to work. She was the one that sometimes she'd be, you know, making everybody laugh. I'm like, hey guys, let's go, for, let's go for ice cream. You know, let's go do this, you know? And I'm looking at her, I'm like, how? You know, and that right there, she, just a huge inspiration. If she can do that, I can do better. What brought you out, out of that uh, uh, mental crisis? One of the things that was a huge, um, I would say, foundation um, of success and support for us was um, our friends and family. I mean, as a long list. Now I can say I understand what the true meaning of love. I understand when, when someone's going through something, just, just the presence of family and friends, you know, even though they can't do nothing, but the fact that they're there and say, hey, are you guys okay? That just goes a long way, you know? Um, it's to the point where it gives you hope. Like, hey, you know what? Now I see the true meaning, the purpose, you know, of why we're here on this earth. You know, we got to do better. You know, there's a lot of times where um, there's a saying where I, I, a friend of mine showed me this video where it talks about there's this guy, he shows a glass jar and he has different tennis balls in it and he has uh, flour and he has some Cheerios and so forth. And he said, this is how you look at life. Life, you know, all the, the tennis balls that's inside this jar is your friends, your family, the most important, important stuff. The Cheerios or the, the flour, that's the minimum stuff, like such as your house, you know, the, not house, but you know what I'm trying to say, like the cars, you know, the, the stuff that really doesn't matter, stuff that can be replaceable. But he said, if you take all the, let's just say the flour and the uh, Cheerios and whatnot, you put that first and then try to put the golf balls afterwards, it will not fit. That blew my mind. And what I got out of that is that, you know, just prioritize what matters the most. Friends, family, the ones who are, well, let me, re let me make a point on that. I mean by friends, the ones that understand when you hit the rock bottom, and they're there with you. Because there's some friends, they, they just, you know, just around you when things are good. But man, I have a lot of good friends that I can say, yeah, you know, they're, they're really good friends. They've been there from day one. I have my sister, I call her Superwoman GG. Um, she, she's always there. Ever since my mom passed away, she, she's like my mom. Like, literally, she always calling, checking up on us, bringing us food. Actually, she went the extra mile and um, she cut her hair in support of my wife. That really hit me hard. You know, when you see someone, you know, because the hair situation, like one of the things that I wanted to do personally to support my wife, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna shave my hair off, you know? Even the kids wanted to do it, she said, no. Actually, this right here, she, she's the one that did my hair. You know, she said, it's therapy for her. You know, it's the little small things 
that goes very far. And as a husband, you know, I have to support her. And her going through it, she realized too, hey, I need to be that beacon of light too. Because if I'm still here, the little time that we have, because we really don't understand the, the magnitude of how important it is to manage the time that you have now. Because think about it. My wife, she, she was not supposed to have this cancer at that age. It's such a rare thing. Such, you know, it's to the point where even doctors are like, we have to study this thing. How in the world you at that age have this particular cancer? Her mom, her parents, no one on her family side had this thing. Now we're in a situation where, yo, we have to fight something that's just the unknown. Now the fact that we understand how it feels, and that's why we choose to be the beacon of light. You know, um, our inspiration, you know, is is being positive. There's no room for negative. And you know, once again, like I said, all the extra stuff that was in that jar, that's all the negative stuff, stuff that doesn't matter, okay? What we choose to do to fight this battle is stay positive, you know? Because everything else doesn't matter, man. Life is just too short. Enjoy the moments. Friends and family, that's the core of it all, okay? But for me personally, um, my favorite thing is music. With music, um, one thing that I realize is it's like a an invisible dimension. It's my escape, you know. Um, the way, as a professional musician, as a professional bass player, um, and also a producer, I look at music. It's like I see things, you know. It's like music to me. It's like an invisible, it's like a canvas, okay? And the notes are just like the colors, okay? Somehow, I'm able to take the different colors and just use that invisible canvas and just paint something that I can see, but somehow, it's like the metaphor behind it is like you're seeing with your ears, you know? And as a producer and as a, a bass player, professional bass player, um, I'm able to accomplish these goals. You know, um, one of the things that I, I think, like as far as my, I call them my secondary family, uh, my friends, um, they allow me to, throughout it all, when I say, hey guys, I need some break. They're like, hey guy, you know, we, we have a gig coming up. You want to come and play with us? Ah, eh, sure, no problem, man. You know, I'll tell my wife, hey, is it okay? She's like, yeah, go, go, go. You know, I'll bring my bass guitar and, and they allow me to, play with them, you know? Music is my escape, you know, it's my outlet. And anytime I have the opportunity, you know, I'll just go ahead and just either go to a studio and just, just whatever is on my mind, just use that invisible canvas and just take the, the invisible or the, the colors and just put it together and then boom, come with the masterpiece. But my baby, my main instrument is the bass guitar. A lot of people are like, why is the bass guitar? Well, bass guitar, this is how I consider it. The bass guitar is like the linebacker, you know? He's the guy that holds everything together. Without the bass, trust me, you will feel when he's not there. And that's, that's how I love about the bass. He's in the background, but there's something about the bass that just, just really hits me hard. You know, it's like um, one of the things, how I ended up playing the bass guitar, that's another um, chapter within itself. But let me give you guys a uh, brief glimpse of how I ended up becoming a bass player. I remember when I moved to Tampa, it was like around 1999, and there's this one bass player, I gotta give him this credit, his name is A.V. Alex Victor. 
All right, this guy, I saw him on the bass on stage and I'm like, what in the world is that sound? Oh my gosh. I'm like, I want to play that instrument. At the time, I didn't know anything about music. You know, I was just a young kid, you know, just do my thing, play video games and sometimes play basketball. Um, years, you know, pass forward, I would say. Um, I, mean, I remember talking to my mom, like, mom, I want to play bass guitar. I need a bass guitar. I don't mind doing a couple extra chores around the house just to, just to make this happen. And long story short, I ended up getting that bass guitar and I just tried to figure it out. And somehow, um, I still can't describe it. I hear things, I'm able to put it together. I, I don't know anything much about music theory. I know a little bit to get me around, but it's just, I hear things, I could play anything for some reason. It's like a gift that I was given from day one, but somehow that moment seeing AV playing bass guitar and digging deep and doing my research about that instrument just unlocked a lot of, I would say, open doors for me. From there on, from playing the bass guitar, I was like, hmm, if I could do this on the bass guitar, I wonder, how about the other instruments? How about the guitar? Hmm. Once again, remember how I explained there's different canvases, there's different colors, you know? I'm like, hey, if I can use this guitar, which is, in other words, like a different brush, I could paint other colors. How about this, key this keyboard? I could paint different colors, you know? And that's how I ended up discovering the art of recording, producing. And that's my escape. There are some days um, you do feel like you want to give up. But my wife, my kids, music is my inspiration. Um, there's points where, you know, there's a point or there's a part where at the beginning of it all, I've started doing research. I'm like, hey, how can I be that support for my wife? You know, what should I do? Um, you know, we, us guys and, you know, people, we, well, the first thing we do is just Google things, you know, like, all right, cool, let me just Google this and just figure it out. See, okay, well, there's probably books out there on how to cope with uh, a situation like this. Fortunately, there's not that much. Um, sad thing about it is come to realize um, you see more statistics such as divorce, people or the spouse just ends up and say, hey, you know, call it a quits because it's just so, it's a level of stress, level of hurt where it's unimaginable. But if I'm here today, my wife is still here, by the grace of God, you know, you can do it, you know. Um, once again, as I mentioned earlier, when a battle chooses you, is either you know, you can stay in that corner. I call it the rabbit hole theory. You can stay in that rabbit hole. You can grieve all the time. Be like, oh, woe is me. You know, my mom passed away. My backbone. One thing I forgot to share. My dad passed away when I was three years old. Can you imagine? You know, I'm a young man. You know, no father figure. Passed away when I was three. 
Now my mom, who's con technically considered the father figure, now she's gone. Now I'm going through the worst thing of them all. Who do I talk to? What do I do? Mentally, yes. It's been tough, tough. Going through all this, did you ever think that you and your wife would be an example to help other people who are facing the same challenges? One of the um, important, uh, I would say, prayers that my wife and I, you know, going through it all, we, we, we always ask God, we're like, okay, there's got to be a, a, a lesson in this whole process, you know, and what, what, what I mean by that is, you know, remember how early I was talking about the different stages, the different, you know, process of dealing with the situation and we're, and then as a man, you know, I'm just thinking like, wow, so if there's not that much information out there on, on how to really fight this thing, you know, um, we're like, hey, how can we be the beacon of light in this process? And, and how can we help others, you know? Uh, funny thing about it is in this past, I would say it's about to hit a year now, um, I've known, I would say about maybe 11 people so far that I know right now that has cancer. And unfortunately, I lost one of my good friends from work. He, uh, good friend from work, he, he had cancer the whole time. When he found out that my wife had cancer, it was a huge support for us. And, and you know, you go through life where sometimes you don't really pay attention to the details. You know, he was there as a support for us. And unfortunately, he, he passed away and it was just one of those things where the lesson that I learned from that is you know we need to be the beacon of the light and help others who are also going through a tough time you know it may not be cancer or whatever it may be you know I can say it's official we understand what it feels like to feel like in a position where you're like you have your hand your your back turned you know against the wall you can't you know not can't, but you can fight it. But when all things crumble, where you're like, oh my gosh, what in the world is going on? How do I fight this battle? You know? Um, and it's, it's crazy how this cancer, it's just, it's now spreading everywhere. Like, it's, it's mind boggling, you know? But one of the things that I realized that's key in fighting this thing, and my wife too, I would say, especially my wife, positivity. You know, show love. You know, we have to be that extension of love. I mean, talking about true love, not that fake one. You know, the one that, you know, hey, when someone say, hey, um, I'm going through something, you know, you're just there listening, you know? Because that's one thing, you know, we all say, oh man, I'm going through something. Oh, you know, I'll pray for you. And then that's it. No, we are supposed to be more than that. Two words to describe your wife. And why? A fighter. <sighs> Superwoman. Reason why my wife, she, she doesn't back down from a fight. Think about it. You know, when I think about it, she came to the US, I would say at an age of 14, 15 years old, you know, all ends, you know, I would say all odds are against her as far as language barrier, you know, come to U.S. and doesn't really know how to, you know, deal with the culture shock, I would say. And yet, she fought all of those. What I mean by that is she went to school, she got her registered, you know, she's a nurse, registered nurse degree, okay? Well, first, let me rewind a little bit. She went ahead and got her medical assistant degree went to school, got her registered nurse degree, and after that, got her master's. Now she's a nurse practitioner. She's a fighter. That was always her dream. If she's a, she's a go-getter, that's another one. I mean, you, I know there's, there's so, I said two words earlier, but it's actually more than that. It's like all in a nutshell, she just, she's just amazing, man. You know, why not fight for her? <laughs> you know, that's, she's my inspiration, you know? for someone who had all odds, you know, as a woman against her, but she came and she fought that, you know? So as far as the carry aspect of it, that's how she hooked me. <laughs> you know, she cares about me, man.
you know? The bass that I play, the, the, the white, I call it white chocolate. The bass guitar that I have, Miss White Chocolate. She's the one that bought it for me. There was a time in life I wanted to stop playing music. I wanted to give up. <laughs> and yeah, she's like, yeah, no, you can't let that go. You're too talented. She bought me my bass guitar. So why should I give up, man? You know? She's my inspiration. What's up, fam? My name is Leonel All Saint. They call me LA. I call me LA Bass. This is my inspiration. Cut. Show cut. Fighter, man. Yeah. 